Well, my first guest has quite the resume. He's the chief counsel of the ACLJ. He's a best-selling author. He's a radio host. He's even a rock and roll musician. And more on that later. But his brand new book is called Jerusalem, a biblical, historical, and legal case for the Jewish capital. But right now, he's kind of front and center in the headlines every day because he happens to be attorney to the President of the United States. Would you welcome Jay Sekulow. Well, Jay, I think the obvious question is, is there anything going on much we need to know about? You can call your daughter and find out. <laughs> yeah, she won't I get talk. To work with. She's great. She uh, won't talk. She will not job. tell me anything. So I've got to bring the president's attorneys yeah. on and grill you. you get so information. Yeah, there you go. Jay, I think a lot of Americans, it's confusing. Yeah. This whole Russia story, yeah. is there collusion? There hasn't been anything that's come out. The House yeah. committee brought its report yep. and said there is zero evidence of it. What the heck is this really about? Look, I mean, I think if you look at what we're dealing with as a country, that what, what people tend to lose in all of this is that there's really a serious constitutional issue here. And, and you know this from your work in government. But the fact of the matter is the president, under Article II of the United States Constitution, has various authority, and that includes dealing with subordinates. So the idea that you could, you know, obstruct justice by, by uh, removing somebody from a position uh, is, I think, very repugnant to the Constitution itself. What's been lost in all of this is what's at stake for the way the founders set up our government. We have three separate branches of government. We have that for a reason. One of the uh, things that becomes very confusing is that you have Congress yeah. that has oversight responsibility of various agencies right. and processes. They ask for documents and the agencies say, no, we're not going to give that to you. Jay, how can a branch of government just thumb their nose at Congress? So we brought a case in federal court against the State Department because they had given, under a previous administration, given grant money to an organization called One Voice that was actually funding a political campaign against the current prime minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. So you talk about you know, campaign interference, uh, foreign interference. They actually, the United States gave our taxpayer money to this group to basically run against, not basically, their plan was to run against uh, Benjamin Netanyahu to, to help that uh, take place. Now, they were not successful, but they got our taxpayer dollars. So we're in federal court on that right now. So the problem is you got to hold these agencies accountable. I, 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 I wrote a book, a song we're going to sing later, called Undemocratic. And it's these agencies. I was an IRS lawyer when I got out of law school. By the way, nobody includes that in my introduction. There's a reason for that. <laughs> they want you to be able to get to your car alive. Uh -huh. So that was my first job, was chief counsel's office of the IRS. And by the way, I, one of the major cases we had last year was against the IRS, my old office. And we were successful in that. They were targeting conservative groups and pro-life groups. But these agencies feel like they're not accountable. So you've got to be very vigilant. Uh, not just with Congress, but utilizing the courts to get information so the American people know exactly what's going on. I want to talk about Israel because this week is going to be an exciting yeah. thing happening, the embassy moving. You have a book. It's called Jerusalem, a Biblical and Historical Case for the Jewish Capital. Yeah. You love Israel. You've yeah. been there many, many, many times. Yeah. Why does this matter so much well, to you? And you know, it's very easy to say Israel has a right to exist. It's another thing to say Israel has a right to exist as a Jewish state, which is what we should be saying, which it does have the right to exist. And what we did in the book was there's so many myths out there. You know, they'll call Israel an occupying force. You have all of these UN agencies that are opposed to Israel's right to exist. So what I did was, with our team, we put together the biblical account, which is great evidence, by the way. Scriptures are a very accurate account of our history. I put together the archaeological evidence, using experts on that, and uh, also the legal issues. That is, does, I mean, it's rather unremarkable that a sovereign nation could say, you know what, Washington, D.C., or for Israel, Jerusalem is our capital. But it's taking, you know, it took a president like this, Donald Trump, to say, I'm going to recognize. By the way, they said there was going to be, remember this, rioting in the streets. It was going to be another intifada. And as the head of our Jerusalem office said, there had been more protests over the increase in the cost of cottage cheese in Israel than there was over the recognition of Jerusalem. And why is that? Because, look, I mean, the, because the fact of the matter is, that it, it's... The Jewish existence in the Holy Land has existed since we have record, recorded history, and that includes the Bible. There, even during times of dispersion, there's always been a Jewish remnant in Israel, and now under the law, under the evidence, and that's how I presented this like a case in court. 
there is no question when you read the book that you come away with the understanding that not only is it a, 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 a land of incredible promise and the biblical prophecies, of course, are clear, but this idea that we have in, in a small country, I mean, you could drive for and you've done it, one yeah. end to the other in six hours. Absolutely. And that's not moving fast. And you can get there quickly. But the fact is this. Look how strategically important Israel is for the United States. Look at the, also, look at history now. You don't, no one talks about this. I mean, you're talking about it. Who are the allies in the Middle East right now? Who would have thought two years ago that the allies of the state of Israel would be Saudi Arabia, <laughs> Egypt, Jordan, and a number of the Gulf states? Because there's a common enemy, and that's Iran. Hmm. So it's a unique time in history, and I think that, look, for the Palestinian people, they're going to have their leadership, which has been resisting recognition of the Jewish state. I think what, uh, what the Saudi prince said, I think what, um, what King Abdullah in Jordan has said is, look, it, the United States will be involved in any peace deal if it happens or not, but let me tell you one thing that's not gonna be divided, and that's Jerusalem. Hmm. There is no way that the Jewish people or the government of Israel can give away land that is rightfully theirs in the first place, and I just don't see it happening, but we've gotta be very vigilant in that regard. Well, I want to thank you for not only your advocacy for Israel, but also the uh, great insights into this book. I, I want people to understand the book is called Jerusalem, a Biblical, Historical, and Legal Case for the Jewish Capital. You can find out how to get a copy of this powerful book at tbn.tv slash Jerusalem. This is going to be a great opportunity for you to get the book through TBN. It's tbn.tv slash Jerusalem.